Hey, what's going on everyone? Moto Fox here. Uh, I talked about this in a few of the comments in my last videos about how I do like a, an overview video on my bike and all the modifications that I've done. Um, so I figured I'll do a quick video right now just to go through everything that I've done on it. Um, kind of go over why I did it, what I did, uh, whether I liked it or not. Um, Shit like that including the the carbs because now i don't have uh the, the stock carbs anymore i got new carbs on that have been extremely working extremely well for me okay so start the front of the bike just go from the front back um if you guys see my other video um all right uh front suspension yeah uh this is from a 1998 yz 250 uh, the triple trees, upper and lower, the forks, and the front tire. Uh, that's a 21 inch front tire, same as the XT350. But obviously those KYB forks are, uh, they're 42 mil, so they're much bigger than the stock XT350 forks, which I always thought were a little undersized for the bike. Um, obviously all this uh, front, housing is basically gone um i have the stock housing and fairing for the front the stock lamp and everything um it was all really heavy to be honest uh, i'm trying to shed as much weight as i can from my bike um so i just put on this super super cheap led light which draws less less current um not that that's a huge issue but and then yeah there's like an aluminum extrusion down there the wiring's pretty pretty crazy right now so definitely something i gotta I gotta work on I gotta get a new harness this harness is pretty shot um, when I got rid of the dash I got rid of a lot of the gauges the stock gauges actually I got rid of all the stock gauges so uh, my lights for you'll see when I do when I talk about the dash but uh, my lights for um, you know turn high beam and uh, neutral are here in the in the windshield Okay, so those forks. The signals are obviously aftermarket. Those are LED signals. They have these uh, resistors that go in line with them, so you still get the right flash pattern. Um, so front brake reservoir uh, was was always hydraulic, obviously, on the YZ and even the XT. Uh, I just got a new reservoir that matches the one on the other side. I really like these style of... Uh, Of levers where you can like adjust the throw of the, of the handle like that on the fly pretty cool yeah sorry about this wiring is pretty rough you know i did get these recently those were hard hard find i was looking for a long time for white ones and then we'll find them on ebay and as soon as i found them on ebay i was like done uh, you can see this is the clark tank they don't perfectly line up with where the clark tank lines up i put a zip time just to make sure they stay they're on here with the bolt and then they're on like a uh, post here. But I was worried that it was gonna slide off that post. I put a rubber grommet on it to make sure it's tight, but still I was like, fuck it. Those are fucking pricey, I'm not losing them. Um, I think they keep temperatures a lot lower. I don't have a skid plate on, as you can see right now. All right, dash. Um, yeah, like I said, neutral, turn, high beam lights are in the dash, or in the um, windshield. This little reflective square there just refracts the, uh, the speedo better because that's like a heads-up display speedo, which I really like. It's cool. You've seen in my videos for sure. Um, I got a temperature probe on the oil uh, line up to the top of the head from the pump, and uh, this just gives me a readout for that. So I can watch whether or not it's overheating. Uh, my, dig my digital tack. I'm sure you guys know how this works it just wraps around the, the uh, coil coil uh, spark plug wire and then wideband air fuel ratio sensor because uh, I had new carbs on it I wanted to make sure that it runs well and especially because I have a new piston in there um, which has been working real well I did break in I did like some starting it letting it run you know different th rpm ranges with fans on it turning it off heat cycling it like that a few times but uh yeah it's been great it's been it seems seems snappier for sure um so yeah i use that to kind of tune the carbs make sure that the, i wasn't getting too lean or too rich anywhere uh it's pretty decent i had to weld a uh right here i had to weld an o2 sensor 
into the exhaust for that closed loop. It's like a Bosch sensor or something. Uh, that's a pretty cool addition I did. Uh, that's for my phone. As you can see on the Clark tank, the Clark gas cap is like defective or some fucking thing because it's delaminating from the side. Like this should not happen, obviously. Uh, it's pretty fucked up because this is an expensive ass tank. You can see the results of that. You see the gas stains. So yeah, I gotta talk to them about that because that's annoying as fuck. I emailed them, but they never got back to me. So I don't know. Maybe I'll look for a new. Uh, maybe I'll look for a new gas cap that fits a Clark tank. If anyone has any suggestions, comment below. <coughs> My clutch, uh, hydraulic clutch. I did a video on this last year. Uh, this is a huge improvement to the stock system. It's so much easier to pull. Uh, I love it. Highly recommend doing this modification. That's probably one of the easiest ones to do and I think one of the best uh, as you can see my carbs PWK 24s both sides um, here's the filters I have pods on both sides they are I think uh, what's the brand again you and uni yeah I think they're both yeah they're uni filters uh, I can't remember the size you have to measure it PWK 24 inlet to see but uh, yeah they're uni filters they do a really good job I soaked them in that proper oil sorry about my bike's real dirty right now because uh, I was riding it and haven't really had a chance to clean up it's pretty rough and now you got a tiny little oil leak right here which is bothering me a lot like it barely it's not even dripping right now that's from other shit it's just uh, I was figuring maybe because I put a new I rebuilt the top end, right? So maybe I just had to wait for the gasket to kind of see better because it wasn't actually even showing any oil anyways. Moving on from that. As you can see, all the rear end looks completely different because this is a YZ250 rear swing arm, which means I had to change the pivot points down here for the... I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, right there. These are, these are new. I got them laser cut out of steel and then welded them on. Uh, and same thing with up here for the top uh, shock tower because you need to keep the same geometry as the YZ250 and obviously this, the shocks are not the same. Uh, luckily, luckily the inside of the motor there that goes through the swing arm was the exact same dimension on the XT350 as a YZ250 from 1998 which is amazing and the bolt um, was a bigger diameter uh, so what I did was I had to remount this hole in the frame and remount the hole through the engine uh, slightly. It was, I think, one or two millimeters larger. So it wasn't like I was reaming it out enough to be like, uh, now I'm taking it away from the structure of the support. It was a very small amount. Um, yeah, my end stop bushing on that shock is fucking shot. I gotta take it out and get this rebuilt. The front, front shocks I already had rebuilt new end stops, uh, new seals, everything, uh, but the rear I haven't done yet, so it's still okay, it's just that bump shock shot, that's for sure. Uh, this is all the wiring for the controller for the wideband O2 sensor. Uh, these PWK24s, um, for the throttle cable, you can see up there, you, I needed to find a throttle cable that had these 90 degree turns right out of the carbs, because you can't really, can't really get them up, up there at all. And they'll hit shit um, so I had to find curves on both sides and they straddle the frame you can see the other one on the other side and then go to that splitter that pulls it into one cord you can look for basically uh, a throttle cable from any motorcycle from uh, that was like a twin cylinder twin car but this I think is from a uh, CB Honda CB 200 throttle cable uh, I used to have a CB 200 so I found this in my parts bins for that I think it was 70s CB200 but yeah you would want to look for some kind of uh, twin cylinder or twin carb throttle cable uh, with these 90 elbows so that coming out of the carbs it follows the frame really well uh, that was kind of clutch to find those uh, yeah and then the carbs uh, they work real well uh, you know unless it gets cold in a warm day I don't even need to use uh, choke to start it and uh, air fuel ratios between like nine and a half ten ten to one 12 11 or 12 is ideal right 12 point something is ideal but you want it to be a little bit richer especially because it's air cooled from what I've heard because air cooling when you run them richer 
uh, you get evaporative cooling from that unburnt gasoline that helps keep the engine cool. When you start running air-cooled engines uh, lean, oh boy, do they overheat quickly. Uh, all right, carbs went through that. Tanks, the Clark tank, like the tank, the cap sucks. Uh, I know this is not an ideal path for the for the tubing for that fuel line, but it didn't seem to affect my ratios at all. Uh, my fuel ratios at all. Okay, uh, these pegs are also from a YZ250. Um, I hate the stock pegs from the XT. Um, I just find them brutally small. Uh, like little tiny little friggin' like the stock ones are like this. It's insane. Anyway, so yeah, I had to drill these out, this bracket out for this pin that's a bit long, that's a bit wider, and you can see the pin's longer than it needs to be. But for all intents and feed purposes, it works. Eventually, I can cut that pin down, drill a new hole. Uh, as you can see, my last ride that I just did sheared off my kickstand, so check it out. Pretty cool. And no, I don't have a kickstand switch on here right now. I uh, started riding uh, really old, old bikes, like 60s, bikes from, from the 60s, and uh, most of them didn't even have that safety mechanism, so I'm very conscious about whether or not my kickstand's down uh, before I ride. Uh, the YZ250 rear swing arm is pretty cool. Uh, the adjustment nut for the t chain tension, which I have to check tension, I know this is too loose, um, is way better than on the XT350. You know, just loosen the shaft, loosen the nut on the main shaft, back this nut off, and then drive this down. And then it has these marks, so you can make sure it's the same on both sides. Uh, Kenda, I got a Kenda tire on here right now. I can't remember what model this is. I can't see it now. I gotta look on the other side. Mill, Millville, Millville Two, Millville Twos, which I've uh, I've I've liked them. They're they're good tires. Uh, the, next, the other good thing about having this uh, YZ250 rear swing arm is uh, the brakes. I got discs now in the back, or a disc in the back, disc in the front. So uh, yeah, this brake is so much better than the stock drum brake. This is also a 19 inch tire, as you can see, 120, 80, 19. There's somewhat of an unusual size, so it is one inch taller rear tire than the stock bike, and the swing arm I think is a tiny bit longer. So it does have a longer uh, wheelbase now than it did as a stock XT. I had to make this crazy looking mechanism to use the, uh, the stock brake lever. I just made this out of a piece of uh, high quality, well, I think it's like aircraft aluminum or something like that. Yeah, before I even, I did not get that professionally made. I just jigsawed it out and went to town. Uh, works okay. I might eventually do some kind of upgrade here. It's on a back plate here, the, 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 mount, the master cylinder and the reservoir is up here for refilling. Um, it does okay. My switch keeps on fucking off. I hate the stock switch. Those spring-loaded ones, I hate them. Um, but yeah, these the limit switches are hard to place. I need some kind of mount for that. Uh, you can see the, uh, the additional brackets that I had that I welded on for the for the suspension for the lower shock tower mount hmm trying to think if there's anything else on this side I have a uh, the battery swapped out with a lipo with a lithium polymer battery like a hobby battery actually um, I did that because uh, they were cheaper than buying those like lithium ones and then I just bought a battery controlled BMS like a little tiny battery management system that's meant for three cell lipos which is like 12.4 volt lipos um, and it just takes over it just takes the uh, power from the bike and uh, makes sure that it charges the cells evenly and doesn't overcharge uh, but still lets me draw current uh, so it's basically converts uh, the lithium battery to work or charge with the bike properly. Uh, okay, I don't think there's anything else. This is a fake KD KO Lightning exhaust. I don't know. Had no issues with it. Sounds good. 
getting beat up a bit, but that's all right. Um, yeah, my bars are uh, aftermarket. I got the Moose, Moose Racing uh, bar savers or whatever they're called. Can't think of the word right now. It's uh, slipping my mind for some reason. Uh, I think that's it. This rear fender is pretty shit. It's super cheap and this kind of crap. It uh, this light constantly goes out on me, blows out on me. So uh, kind of lame. I might open it up this time to see what's going on because it's like the third one that that's done that too. They're super cheap, so most times I just buy a new one. Uh, Ten bucks, whatever. Go through one a year. Uh, alrighty, yeah. Well, let me know if you guys have any questions. I'm happy to answer anything in the comments. And see you next time.